Hello everybody and welcome to Uprising 144K. I'm Hydra Man. Before I begin guys, I'm not giving you any medical advice. I'm not making any medical claims and everything stated in this video, the opinions of the speaker and should not be construed as claims for or against any product or products. With that being said, I'm just gonna make a really quick video here about how to choose the best hydrogen generator, both for safety and for it to be effective. And if you guys want a detailed video of this, basically with more detail, comment below. The first thing you wanna look at is metal, guys. Metal is so important when making hydrogen. Anything that uses stainless steel, I would definitely stay away from it. Or anything that uses a plated or coated metal, I would stay away from it. The next thing that you wanna look at is membranes. Uh, if you, the device doesn't use any type of membrane, I would also stay away from it. You absolutely gonna to wanna to have a membrane. Basically, everybody thinks the best is S-P-E-P-E-M technology in regards to membranes, but there is better technology than that, but almost nobody has it. I think the only machine actually in the world that has it is the one from a company called HolyHydrogen.com. The Lord has Hydroflex Premium. That's the one that I like to use, but at least get S-P-E-P-E-M membranes. I will say though, if it's a DuPont membrane these days, after seeing some lab tests, I'm very weary of those, but that's something you're gonna to wanna to look forward for also. The other one is where it's made. If it's made in China, personally, I just stay away from those. I haven't seen anything good come out of China at this time. It's something that I would look for. All the three best devices in the world that I've seen that I would use for safety and for them to actually be effective and then even reliable, they've all been Japanese. And so that's just my opinion, but that's one thing that I would definitely look for. Uh, the other one is you want to make sure that they make really good nano bubbles in regards to when it's making the hydrogen water. That's something very important. And then you want to look at how it's going about making the hydrogen because there's different methods. There's things like, for example, a chemical reaction, which would be something like uh, these little rods or there's a lot of different devices that also use, for example, like uh, little cartridges that have... Uh, they have like, I don't want to say a chemical, but it's kind of like the hydrogen tablets that create a chemical reaction. I would stay away from anything that uses these magnesium cartridges or rods. I'm not going to go into detail in this video because otherwise it gets too long, but that's the first thing that I would absolutely stay away from. Anything that directly electrolyzes the water, I stay away from. That's This is a good example of that, the way they directly electrolyze the water. The Japanese have found that they're just not the best way of making hydrogen due to impurities. When it comes to gases, you want really high purity. There really is only two ways that I have seen and the Japanese through all their research on what to look for to make really high pure hydrogen gas. One is when they have, for example, hydrogen gas that is injected into the water. It's like a pressure, it's like a pressurized gas, kind of like uh, CO2 in some of these like machines that can inject the gas to make like carbonated water, for example, something very similar to that. The only other system that I've seen is actually uh, basically a two stage or basically dual chamber type of system. But I've also learned that after a lot of scientific study in Japan, they realized that a lot of these dual chamber systems, they're not all made the same. And the reason is, is because of the computer. I didn't even realize that you have to really regulate the electrical current, otherwise you get spikes in it. And then depending on the metal quality that you're using, the membrane quality that you're using, it literally can cause issues where they start to disintegrate and potentially polluting the gas or the water. So that's something really important to look for if you're gonna be looking at a dual chamber. I've only seen one good dual chamber, and again, that is the Lourdes Hydrofix from Japan. So the dual chamber is ultimately the other really good method in regards to hydrogen gas. Everything else, I, I just don't do. So only what is recommended by actual medical professionals in Japan is what I would personally use, and it's for good reason. It's not for, you know, for no reason. There's good reason behind it. And then the last thing is you actually wanna look at the output of a hydrogen device. I know everybody thinks that the higher the output of a hydrogen device is what's best. I have now learned that there are potential dangers with the higher the output of the device. Why? Because you guys have to understand that we're talking about something that's going to use metal. And especially if you're using the wrong kind of metal, you know, coated metals, plated metals, stainless steel, you know, and or if you're using even something with like lye or sodium hydroxide, these type of things, then you're running ele electricity literally through water and it's gonna affect this metal. And the higher the output of the hydrogen, which is what people think that they want, it seems to cause more degradation of the metal and or membranes. Think about what that's gonna to do to the water you're gonna be drinking from the device or the gas that you're gonna be inhaling from it. People are not thinking about this. The Japanese have discovered this through their rigorous research. It's the reason that their number one device literally has this really interesting technology that apparently nobody has, only Japanese have this technology, where they're using super low amounts of electricity while still gaining 
or getting the proper output of hydrogen gas that is deemed medically necessary in Japan and medically effective. In fact, if you guys want a more detailed video about what medical professionals, the amounts of hydrogen gas that they're using in Japan at actual universities, like again, medical professionals, practicing physicians that are actually using this stuff on patients rather than people who claim to be professionals. I'm very worried about that because I have not seen one in the United States. I know people claim to be, but there are no actual medical professionals using hydrogen gas medically that is approved in America at actual university hospitals on patients. So this is really important to understand in my opinion. Hopefully this gave you enough information to do a little research and what you're looking for out there. And if you guys have more questions, comment below and I can make a more detailed video later. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time on the next one.